You're listening to the Skills World Live radio show with Tom Buick. Get the career you want with the skills employers need. Make a BTEC work for you. Welcome to the Skills World Live radio show, sponsored by OneFile, a world where everyone is learning for their future. Stay tuned, Stay tuned. for all the news, views and interviews in association with FE News. Hello, I'm Tom Buick. And hello, I'm Mim Davis. Welcome to this very special Christmas edition of Skills World Live. Yeah, as you can see, I've temporarily traded in my usual solitary role as the presenter of this online community radio show, Connecting the World of FE. And what a pleasure it is to be joined by not only the UK's Employment Minister, but broadcasting from here in the heart of Mid-Sussex. She's also the local constituency member of Parliament. Welcome, Mims. Hello. And uh, thanks for providing me with a bit of company on the show this Christmas. You're welcome, Tom, and thanks for inviting me. So what's coming up on the show this week? Over the next 60 glorious minutes, we'll be looking in more detail at how the UK has risen to the employment challenge throughout the pandemic. That's right. We've got record employment vacancies in the British economy at the moment, but that does not mean to say there have not been some very specific challenges over the last 20 months. At the Department of Work and Pensions, we've been focused on ensuring that people, both young and old, can get the opportunities to progress in the jobs market. You're listening to the Skills World Live radio show with Tom Buick. So stay tuned, folks, in our video chat segments coming up on the show this week. We've got some fantastic guests who'll be sharing their experiences with us. But first, you know the drill. This is a community radio show and we get to spin some of our favourite tunes from the 80s, 90s and even the modern day. You got your tracks ready to go, Mims? Absolutely. Let's kick off then with this classic cover version from a young pop band that I interviewed in the last series of the show. Indeed, the lead singer Max Kendall told me that he was so inspired by his parents' 1980s record collection that he formed the band Deco with his keyboard playing sister and two other band members. Now, climbing the Billboard charts, last seen at number 50, it's Bitter Sweet Symphony. <laughs> Tell the only one 
Cause it's a bittersweet Symphony that's life That was Tom's first choice of track there from Deco called Bittersweet Symphony. Don't forget all these songs are on the show's Spotify playlist. Just search for Skills World Live. Now coming up in our first video, we're going to look at how DWP has been responding throughout the pandemic. And joining us down the line is Lucy and Hugh. Hello, Lucy, you're a work coach in Newtown Job Centre in Wales. What jobs and sectors are you getting the most requests for right now? Hi Tom, hi Mims. Um, it's really great to see the job uh, market so buoyant at the minute actually. Um, we're getting a lot of requests for healthcare jobs. Um, it's also a busy time of year um, with the lead up to Christmas. So we've seen a lot of jobs in um, retail and the hospitality industry as well. Um, but the majority of jobs I would say are from the production manufacturing. Um, but there is a very good range of vacancies here in Newtown. So Hugh, what does being based in a youth hub help you provide in terms of extra support for young people? Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Christmas, and a safe Christmas first of all. May I wish everyone. Um, so basically, a youth hub, um, what it provides is, is, first of all, is a different atmosphere from a job centre, which I think is a key thing for engaging young people. So a youth hub is aimed at um, customers who are aged 16 to 24. Um, and I think sometimes the perception of a job centre can be this big sort of place that people are, a bit, are looking to go to. And I think the, the fact that the youth hub is based outside of a, of a job centre, the youth hub out, I mean, is based in Newcastle City Library. Uh, and what that does straight away, it breaks down that barrier between customer and job centre. And that, in a, in a sense, gives customers that sense of a bit more relaxed, to feel more able to open up. Mm. That then allows me to sort of, you know, discuss further about their the support they need, the, the circumstances. Um, within that also, um, in the actual skills hub, the youth hub, sorry, where we work, I work out of, there's partners around myself. So what I can do there is if a customer comes in, you know, I've got on hand support from partner organisations who support the DWP, support Job Centre, and that's the range of different support, whether it be health, whether it be just a CV, training, you know, it could be uh, interview skills, a whole raft of different things. And then the, the partner organisations are there on top so I can, in effect, refer a customer for support there and then in the Skills Hub, in the Youth Hub. So what it also does, um, it allows me as well to create, and I've done a couple of these already, these social meetings with customers. Now, what that does is it gets customers, again, away from this sort of job centre setting um, into a more sort of social meeting, in a more social setting, obviously socially distanced at the moment. Uh, that's done. But what that does is it's a complete sort of change from job centre, the normal rules. Mm. And again, that breaks down barriers. It allows customers to meet each other. You know, they meet, they meet people who are in the same position as yeah. them. They discuss things around work. You know, so it's just a whole, their personal lives even. And it gets mm. that, breaks them barriers down. Um, and that allows me to sort of understand better uh, support I can offer further you know yeah. I can sort of learn and review things there but get that you, it's Tom here I'm going to jump before. in right because you're right, you know yeah. I could tell you're so enthusiastic about your it. job you know I feel like we could take up the whole podcast it could you know we actually sorry, rename sorry. it the you <laughs> podcast from South Wales look I mean I just think it's brilliant you know even the way you uh, refer to young people as customers look it's been a long time since um, I was unemployed in the 1980s I remember signing on going to those job centres they had this horrible orange branding I also remember them, the, the job cards I'm sure it's, it's green a huge now, amount yeah, it's all it is, yeah. it's all green you've got kind of computers but what really struck me about what you just said there as well about that environment you know that social environment because as we know you know for anyone that's gone through about of um, unemployment or joblessness uh, it is that sort of sense it's not just that you were uh, without work and you know, obviously the, the dignity that comes with having a good job but you're kind of cut off from those social networks as well aren't you so you know, it sounds from what you're doing that that's a really important element to it. And Hugh is part of teams up and down the land that we've set up through COVID and done it uh, virtually initially and now obviously face to face. And there's 150 uh, yeah. across the country now um, with everything in terms of enthusiasm that Hugh mm. was describing in terms of helping young people in that slightly more relaxed setting yeah. to try and uncover what's holding them back. Yeah. And Lucy, I mean, what are the kind of things do you think that hold young people back in particular from landing that decent job? 
So I um, also have a case of debating to 24s. Um, I've absolutely loved working um, with our customers of that age range. Um, I just feel like the Kickstart um, placement, it really just does give people a chance. Um, you know, we've got, um, we're in quite a rural area here in Newtown, so a lot of people don't drive. Um, a, they may not have um, relevant experience or skills that a lot of the jobs require. Um, so a lot of these Kickstart placements, they offer, um, they, they don't need any specific uh, qualifications or specific skills with uh, experience to go ahead and do the job so it's just giving people that chance really and employers have been so supportive of the, supportive mm. of these young people as well um so it's really nice to see the employers on yeah. board too perhaps yeah. Hugh, you can give us thank you lucy perhaps Hugh, you can give us one of your success stories where being in the youth hub that we have with dwp and the way that kickstarts help lucy is there somebody that you know a story that stands out for you because the youth hub provisions work for them yeah, um, as you'd expect, I've got quite a lot of different stories uh, for customer okay. support. But uh, just got what, one what focus on, <laughs> okay, just focus on one uh, customer um, and and the, the lady. So, and her her main language was not English, but she could converse okay in English. Um, so, what we did in the 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 youth hub was, you know, we sort of um, I discussed with her her situation, her her sort of barriers, like what she thought were herself, came up with this sort of a plan. So we had to like they would journey of what the customer is going to do in terms of employment on universal credit. Um, and again, just as what Lucy's mentioned, um, there was a kickstart vacancy, which was um, an opportunity for the customer to go to, but she was a bit unsure about interview skills. She was a bit unsure about the um, anxieties. So we had a partner organisation in. The, the the youth hub um, is called NUF, the Newcastle United Foundation, linked with this, the football club, but not specifically part of it. So myself and the the team from NUF, we worked sort of together, collaborated to get the support that um, the customer needed. Customer was successful at getting through the interview. Um, and with the sort of support she had and also kind of breaking down them barriers of her self-belief and what she thought was herself, you know, about her own confidence and how she could then sort of grow and develop herself. And what actually happened was um, the customer came in that was successful, but she wasn't sure where to go. <laughs> she didn't know where to go to the actual employment. So I took it upon myself because I have a, quite a bit of autonomy in the youth hub. I took it upon myself uh, and I said, look, why don't I take you to the actual employer and it was five minutes from where I actually worked so I took the customer to the employer and, and just, just said we've come along and that's you know it was because I'd built them relationships with the customer um, she knew she, she, she trusted me you know she, she knew I had her best interest at heart and then we met the employer the customer wasn't due to start until the following Monday but when I spoke to the employer there they were saying you know it's great it's, it shows initiative that she was going to come along there because on Google Maps she was getting a bit confused and I thought what's right for the customer because yeah. I'm a, I'm a human being and I'm a person he's off again one, isn't he Mims he's one, off look one, he's, you know, he's going to take up the whole podcast I'm, I'm just talking about I'm, this one case I think I'm, I'm, sorry, you, you are but, so enthusiastic it's great look uh, I hope she's driving now Hugh I'm sure yeah, she is yeah. she's doing yeah, yeah she's one it sounds of like you've done an great. amazing yeah. job yeah. there brilliant thank, thank you. you if I get lost in Newcastle I'm coming to you yeah exactly and look I mean just on the kickstart um, uh, scheme as well Minister because we've just finished a six month placement with Alex he, he was a fantastic um, Kickstarter for us. In fact, he's uh, landed a job now in uh, Japan. He's going to be teaching uh, English as a second language. Wow. So, uh, you know, it's just been a brilliant uh, scheme. And it, and it is just such a good way, isn't it, of connecting those under 25-year-olds? Because actually, when you look at the figures, um, you know, I think we've got about 11% unemployment rate for under 25. So it's, you know, it's near, well, well, it's over twice that for the adult rate. But actually, you know, Kickstart's been really good at, at you're just giving that first rung on the ladder, hasn't it, for those young people? Yeah, it makes my heart sing when you hear stories like yeah. Hughes just described and, and Lucy. It, every community, it's been changing lives. We've got over 112,000 young people in those life-changing opportunities. And as you say, this has uh, developed global travel as well for, for your Kickstarter. But what it's also done is it's uh, brought people uh, an opportunity to disrupt their recruitment, to bring mm. people in, and also given them confidence to go further in the future themselves to give give people those opportunities interestingly Tom many people who I spoke to about it the first time said I was on YTS yeah, so I had my first chance scheme, yeah. and 
I'm getting the chance to to give that back. So thank you to the Kickstart employers and organisations. We couldn't do it without you. And young people have had their lives changed. And we're going to hear more about that later in the show. Indeed, they certainly have. Hugh, Lucy, I'm afraid that's all we have got time for. But thanks so much for joining Skills World Live today. You're listening to the Skills World Live radio show with Tom Buick. and I want to dance with somebody. What's the story behind that track selection then, Mims? Oh, come on, Tom. It's been a tough year and I think so many people are looking forward to Christmas. But whether it's a wedding or Christmas or a birthday, if that track is on, we are up. We are not singing Whitney quality, but we're definitely <laughs> singing away with her. Uh, but I do think a lot of people are looking forward to getting together this year. They are. And yeah. uh, I'm sure that will be played somewhere over the Christmas or New Year, perhaps. Okay. You've never had a boogie with Michael Gove, then? No, I'm not guilty on that. I was thinking, well, he's a raver. Who, who shall I dance with? I could get. I could. I reckon it'd be good to see Santa up there, giving it some moves. Okay, <laughs> be a Mo- bit hot for him though. <laughs> Moving on, then uh, one of the real highlights for me about recording the show this year has been the opportunity to get out of my man cave here in Mid Sussex and record a few episodes on the road. In October, Tom took this show to Oldham College and working with the staff and students put on a question time format in front of a live audience, attracting an online audience of over 15,000 listeners. Yeah, the response we got to the college episode had other FE providers contacting us asking whether we'd record a radio show episode with them. So not one to disappoint, and thanks to the very kind sponsorship of Pearson, BTEC and Apprenticeships, we'll be visiting five FE colleges in the new year starting in late Jan so look out for further details and uh, what I'm particularly looking forward to is the fact that every one of those episodes will be co-produced by BTEC Media Production students that's amazing I also noticed that students of Oldham College have made a lovely video to raise money for the local charity Age UK yeah the backstory to this heart warmer starts in 2019 when uh, 80 year old Terence Bryan revealed in a BBC breakfast interview that he'd spent every Christmas day alone for the previous 20 years 
When Mr. Bryan further revealed that he didn't even own a Christmas tree, Oldham College staff and students swiftly delivered one to his home, along with a choir to sing his favourite carol, Silent Night, on his doorstep, famously reducing him into floods of happy tears. Oh, what a lovely story. The charity single we're about to play is called Christmas Is Here, which was co-written by lead vocalist Laura Purdy, who's the manager of the Grange Theatre at Oldham College, and James Atherton who's artistic director for the Oldham Theatre Workshop. Yeah, everyone do spare a thought for thousands of people like Mr Bryan this Christmas who, for whatever reason, might find themselves alone. By checking on your elderly neighbours, and I've got them, and looking after them and donating to charities like Age UK, you can really make a meaningful difference. Better still, go and buy the single from the place that you usually download your music from and give more senior citizens like Terence something to cheer this festive season. Outside the snow is falling and the sun's way out of view Can't hide, you know it's calling Santa's on his sleigh and he's coming to you Pinch yourself, wake up, you feel Forget the Grinch, the elf is real This time together only comes once in a year Christmas is here Christmas is now Glowing, everybody's here tonight. Hold your breath, close your eyes, make a wish for a big surprise. A time together only comes once in a year. Christmas is here. I do love Oldham College and it was great to see the principal there, Alan Francis, be appointed as the new deputy chair of the Independent Social Mobility Commission, which just shows what a central role the FE sector is increasingly playing in our national debate. It certainly does, Tom. And in terms of what the government is doing to deliver better support for young people, I'd like to now introduce Maddie Sweetman and Fiona Sutherland to our audience. Maddie, what's it like working for the club you've supported all your life? Hi, Mims. Hi, Tom. And Merry Christmas. Um, Yeah, it's absolutely a dream come true. It's something I never thought I would see happen. Um, I always imagined being able to work with the club, but I never in my wildest dreams thought by 22 I'd be able to get there or have the qualifications for them to want me there. (laughs) 
That's awesome, Maddie. Fiona, how has Kickstart helped AFC Wimbledon take on brilliant young people like Maddie? Um, it's been absolutely great for us. So um, we're a small charity, the AFC Women and Foundation. Um, we don't always have funding to take on um, new staff members. So it's been able to support us to expand our offerings to local people um, and also reach out to support people like Maddie who are um, in the local community and really, really capable. Um, but we might not be able to take on board in a full-time role initially, um, but it helps us to give them lots of uh, experience and um, get them out there and get their CV um, up to scratch and get some experience for them. And we couldn't have done Kickstart without employers like you, Fiona, and these amazing opportunities for young people like Maddie. So, Maddie, you were helped by your work coach find this Kickstart role uh, and get involved uh, with your dream club. Uh, how did that work and how did it feel when you were at a job centre and found that that was going to be an opportunity that you could take? So I was um, it was all done online, obviously, through the pandemic. Um, and I was going through being unemployed. And like you were saying earlier, it's it's very hard and it's very unsociable. And then when you're in a pandemic already, the anxiety levels are heightened. So the idea of going back into a new workspace, meeting all new people is just heightening that anxiety. Um, so it was really nice because Julia and Emma, my work coaches, were able to um, help me through the whole process, give me any opportunities with interviews, um, help setups. Um, they were also able to help me with my CVs. Um, and they were just really, really easy flowing throughout the whole process and making sure that they did everything they could to get me an interview with AFC Wimbledon. Um, and it was, it was just so helpful to have people there that wanted to help. Mm. Sounds like Maddie as well. You didn't expect that because Tom was talking earlier about, you know, job centres in the 80s. We've changed a lot. There's a lot of support. Uh, our work coaches are amazing. And it sounds like you had a brilliant experience. And we hear that so much. Have mm. you been able, Maddie, to explain this to other people who might be in the situation you were in? So I've um, spoken to kind of my friends and I've had the opportunity with articles, but I've not really been able to go out there and reach out to others. I have my own um, like social media page for mental health awareness and support. Um, and through that, I do also mention the kickstart process and how important it is to just reach out and think about your avenues, think about who you know and not what you know all the time. And going through them job, sets, job centres, they do know the people and they will be able to get your foot in that door yeah. somewhere. So it's really important, I think. Yeah, it's so inspiring. Fiona, I've got a question for you, actually, more of a sporting one. I mean, how is uh, AFC Wimbledon doing on the pitch? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a question for Maddie. She's the, she's the biggest fan in, in right. the club. So okay. she's the one that follows the most closely. Right, but, okay. Um, yeah. I know we're getting there, aren't we, Maddie? Yeah. How are they doing then, Maddie? We're definitely um, doing much better this season. There's a whole different element to the club, um, being at Plough Lane. Obviously, we're... 75 percent owned by fans so wow. for us to have our stadium back that we've kind of funded ourselves mm. to have this close-knitted team and community working together it's just it's phenomenal i mean you can walk down plow lane and you can hear us from the other end mm. hayden's road can hear us it's it's lovely to be back and on the pitch we're performing well as well we're starting to give us them results and funnily enough it's a very young team just like obviously the kickstart scheme our team is also very very young in age so it's yeah. good to see yeah. the youth kind of doing well in all areas across the board yeah presumably football clubs could take on players via a, uh, the kickstart scheme can they or the, uh, do the rules prevent that no sport has been amazing and as, as fiona's just described actually for some of the smaller clubs it's been a great way for, for them to get the uh, people that they need to, to keep them going during the pandemic and give people that start. And as Maddie's just described, people are so connected to their football mm. clubs and the chance to be there, uh, whether it's in, in maintenance or grounds work. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. And our football clubs have been brilliant as well. We heard about youth hubs earlier. Uh, we've got ones linked to, to Rangers, to Rotherham Football Club. Uh, so actually, uh, some of our under 25s in those 150 50 youth clubs uh, hubs across um, DWP um, are in football clubs which mm. means so much in the heart of the community and there's that trust there and that link uh, that Maddie's just described as well so um, mm. employers like Fiona and football clubs and rugby in fact sport more widely um, heritage you know anything that's strong in the community people have come forward with opportunities knowing that the pandemic also as we heard from Maddie had such a strong impact on the opportunities of young people mm. 
So they've wanted to step forward and the government supporting with the £2 billion programme has, has been transformative. And I think uh, football clubs getting people like Maddie in should count themselves very, very lucky. Yeah, they certainly are. And um, Fiona, I mean, in terms of uh, apprenticeships, I mean, yeah, obviously the minister here is responsible for kickstart for employment, but there's another two and a half billion pounds, of course, goes into uh, apprenticeships and young people can benefit from that. Do you see um, that scheme also having a, a part to play in helping young people in future? Absolutely. It's one of those stepping stones and it's so important for employers taking on people in kickstart roles to think about their pathways mm. out of those kickstart roles. Yeah. Um, it's great giving someone six months experience, but then for them to have to go back on universal credit and start the process all over again, yeah. be quite demoralising. Yeah. So we've been really fortunate that with the support of um, the apprenticeship scheme, we've been able to take Maddie on for another 18 months. Um, so she's managed to keep doing her role, but she's also learning alongside that, which will develop her um, mm. professionally as well. Yeah. Um, and it just gives her another stepping stone to the next opportunities and it allows us yeah. as a charity to be working on our plan of how we can further employ Maddie in the future. Absolutely. Well, that's why we're so pleased with Alex, because uh, although he hasn't stayed on our organisation, he wanted to travel, but he's been able to progress to a job overseas and, and that's just so important isn't it otherwise you, you get the revolving door syndrome yeah thomas yeah. we we've just heard from fiona many people are transitioning their kickstarters into apprentices it's, a, it's anecdotally we're doing the evaluation at the moment uh, seven mm. eight um or out of ten of uh, young people are moving on either to full-time roles or into traineeships or apprenticeships with their employers so it's doing exactly what we need and of course we're here uh, on a, a radio uh, a program all about skills mm. it's giving young people the skills exactly. and also, confidence yeah and the pipeline mm. you know one of our mm. biggest challenges in this country has been pipelining people that we need and this mm. is exactly what we've done but it's also given those employers that confidence to go and give that young person opportunity yeah. they always want that finished product none of us started in the jobs that we do now as the finished product mm. why on earth would employers continually want that finished product you want yeah. to help shape and nurture and give people do. that first chance yeah and uh, that journey from being a novice to mastery it can't be achieved overnight and that's why you need that patience both for the young person and for the employer and that investment over the long term don't we that's why i've guilted the employers into remembering their yts days yes. the days that they were green and you know they didn't have that strong network etc mm. because people easily forget that and yeah. i think kickstart has been that disruptor to help people Brilliant. remember their first chances who believed in them and who gave them a chance yeah maddie fiona you're a fantastic inspiration thanks so much for coming on the podcast today you're listening to the skills world live radio show with tom buick one file is the best apprenticeship e-portfolio in the world but did you know it's ideal for all kinds of vocational training including traineeships one file is very flexible so it has everything you need to deliver manage and track traineeship progress we're currently using one file for all our traineeship learners they love it and so do we it's fabulous thank you one file to find out more about one file head to onefile.co.uk and book a demo with a member of the team
Another ministerial choice there from the sound vaults of Mims Davies MP and for today also the show's co-presenter. That was Wilson Phillips. And hold on, what's the story behind that one? Well, it's one of those songs. It's a bit of a female anthem. Is it? It's right, also okay. on I'm, I'm excluded. Maids, which right. is, well, <laughs> you're not, you're very much included, but it's also uh, on Bridesmaids, which is a very funny film. And um, it's just, actually, if you listen to the to the lyrics, which maybe aren't for you, Tom, it's a bit of that female yeah, anthem. Okay. Uh, a message, just a message. everything will be fine. We all need that Heart right now, don't we? Fine. Okay, so you're listening to the Skills World Live radio show at fenews.co.uk and all your favourite streaming sites. In our next segment, we're going to look at the support available to career changers. And joining us for our video chat is Stuart and Claire. Now, hello, Grimsby. We're heading up to see Claire and Stuart uh, about Claire's journey. Uh, So no pun intended. You uh, look to train as a a bus driver, Claire. Uh, Yeah. Um, Hi, Mims and Tom. Um, Yeah, I um, I liked... The, I liked driving and I am um, the customer base side of the job. So it was perfect for me to go ahead and train in that. So, Claire, you were doing something different part time before you went into bus driving. <laughs> How did you recognise it was time to do something different? Um, I just, it was just something I wanted to do. Um, and it was just, I felt that it was time to get on with it and, Stuart helped me um, see that I've got potential and I can go and do yeah. what I wanted. Yeah, Claire, I mean, I'm not too familiar with all the different licences and DVLA regulations, but anyone watching the news recently will know that there's a big demand for HGV lorry drivers. Is it the same licence to, to drive a haulage truck as it is to drive a big bus in Grimsby? <laughs> um, no, it's not, no. All right, okay, well, I got that wrong do then. a different one, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, Stuart, let's let's hear from your side about Claire's journey. Um, sorry, every pun is coming out here, Tom. And, yeah, and, uh, Dri- Stuart yeah. And, uh, driving Claire. journeys. So, um, up in Grimsby, obviously needing more bus drivers, and I know very much so, actually, the sector's been trying to reach out to get more women drivers uh, and show that actually the shifts can work really well. It's a fantastic opportunity, as uh, Claire mentioned, to get out in the community and do something that's, you know, different uh, and support supports people every day. Stuart, tell us about how you knew that you could get Claire into this career that clearly she was keen to, to give a try. Hello, Mims. Uh, hello, Tom. And Merry Christmas. And thanks very much for uh, for inviting me on the, on the podcast. And today is all about celebrating Claire because that's exactly why I, I knew the time was right, everything was right, the, the sort of planets aligned. Because Claire and I... Um, We met by accident with Claire supporting us right here in the job centre, helping us out with a really critical COVID cleaning um, position there. So Claire was keeping us safe as as part of our team in the job centre. But the position um, wasn't giving Claire all the sorts of the challenges that Claire needed to have a really successful career. So when Claire and I started talking, it was purely by accident as, as you speak with colleagues. I saw this this diamond shining through and clear that the potential was all in clear. All we needed to do is get all that confidence coming out, get clear to show that she's the, the best possible candidate for the role. Um, we, we had one or two setbacks along the way, so vacancies were withdrawn at short notice, but Claire didn't let that knock her back really. What, what Claire decided is she's not going to accept no for an answer. She went to accept simply to say the vacancy is gone. We, we're going to lay back and, and let that be the end of the story. Claire has the motivation, the drive, the, the inspiration. That with pun the again, the drive. There <laughs> we go. <laughs> we like it. <laughs> <laughs> these puns there, it's going to be driving puns all, all the way. Oh, yeah. um, I'm it, driving it was, home for Christmas, it says on my jumper, if you can see that. <laughs> You've <laughs> accelerated her career, Stuart. Um, sorry, we, yeah. we, couldn't, we yeah. couldn't stop. But Stuart, that's amazing 
because we have had a, a wonderful group of people joining DWP, keeping our job centres uh, yeah. safe, COVID safe and extra clean mm. all the way through. We've been open all the way through for the most vulnerable. We'll be doing the same this Christmas and, and mm. into the New Year's. People's circumstances change or they want to change, Stuart, because actually in the new year, a lot of people are going to be coming to you and perhaps saying we want to progress and it's time mm. for us in the way that you saw with Claire. Mm. Certainly. I mean, helping people is just in our DNA. It's, it's what we do so well. There's no certain um, path that you have to take for, for every certain individual. It's all about looking at that individual and treating them as a person. That's what we do really effectively yeah. here in Greensby. It's what we do really effectively across job centres right up and down the country. Mm-hmm. Stuart, I mean, a question I had for you, actually, given that there's, I think, 1.2 million vacancies now in the economy. And at one level, that's fantastic. Employers are out there. They're hiring. You know, the unemployment rate is below 5%. That's, again, brilliant when you consider how worried we were just a year ago with the end of furlough. Um, but you know, to what extent also are we seeing or could we see uh, in the new year what economists are also calling the great resignation, you know, the sort of start of the year and even more people could potentially come on to the labour market and you know, even more vacancies, you know, how do we kind of ensure we get that match and that fit, uh, you know, between the jobs that employers are hiring for and the people and the skills out there to, to fill them? Well, because we, we don't know what's coming around the corner, what, we're not too sure what's happening in the labour market for, for certain. We've got rough ideas what trends might be happening. There's going to be seasonal trends. There's going to be different people looking at different careers. And in the new year, a lot of people do look at, at new jobs. I think what really is effective that DWP now is so much more agile than perhaps we were in, in times gone past. Mm. So we can look at individual circumstances and, and respond to those circumstances appropriately. So if we treat people as individuals, we treat each case as a unique person behind that number, we can't go far wrong. And then we'll be able to support people into retraining, into into new careers. If they want to have the same career as a different source of work level, we can support lots of people with lots of different backgrounds. And I feel we're really, really well placed as an agile organisation. Yeah, that's great. Mims, I've heard this so much today uh, with all the, the, the guests we've spoken to about tailoring and customising the support, the mentoring and the coaching. I mean, it really has come on leaps and bounds from my unemployment days in the 1980s, I, I can tell you. I keep telling people, go to a job centre. I not, must do that. Uh, because the, the experience, and uh, following enough, I'm going to be popping into one uh, later today. Um, it's uh, forever what I do, to listen to people on the ground exactly uh, as, Stuart, as Stuart's described. Yeah. We really are linked into the local economy. We know what local employers need. We know what the skills gaps and the the need is for for people such as Claire who comes through the door. But also, I think, uh, as we've heard, you know, this is about progressing people as well. Mm. So job centres and Claire, you're a shiny example, actually, of what what our next stage is going to be in the new year. Mm. One thing the pandemic has shown us is people want more money in their bank They want to know that if something happens, that they can be uh, able to withstand it. So they want to earn more money and they want to take those opportunities that are out in the local labour market. Mm. Uh, And they want to grab that. And and that's what Claire's done. Mm. And our work coaches, such as Stuart in Grimsby and across the land, will be doing even more of that in the new year. Helping people upskill and add on skills and really um, direct those people who are waiting for that chance into those vacancies locally. So well done, Claire you are a shining example of what we're going to be doing even more of what's it meant for you by progressing from from the cleaning role into the bus driving it's 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 just meant a lot to me um it's job security um mm. you know like you say it's the money it's fantastic just you know and I really appreciate Stuart's help. So, yeah. Thank you. And well, it happens up and down the land okay. every day. So, yeah. And I just love that about yeah. my job at DWP and the teams that we have like Stuart. So thank you yeah. very much for sharing your stories, folks. Indeed. And I'm going to end then on the final crass pun then. So, you know, all uh, shoulders to the wheel for you, uh, Claire, and keep <laughs> driving you. forward, Stuart. And thanks so much again for joining Skills World Live. Contact us at Skills World Live. We want to hear from you. Email skillsworld at fenews.co.uk. Follow us on Twitter at Skills World Live at Tom Buick. Use the hashtag Skills World Live. Call us on 02032 900 111.
That's 02032 900 111. Welcome back to Skills World Live. Regular viewers and listeners will know that we're very fortunate at this channel to have some fantastic FE partners and sponsors associated with the show. And a regular favourite in 2021 has been one of the sector's most well-known entrepreneurs indeed, a Manchester-based tech company won a Queen's Award for Innovation only a couple of years ago. I'm talking about Susanna Lawson, founder of OnesFile. Hi, Susanna. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mims. Thanks for inviting me today. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too. Now, since you last appeared in one of our live shows, uh, recording at Oldham College, uh, you stepped back from uh, the day-to-day running of OneFile. Why is that? So, yeah, about six weeks ago, um, we sold one file to the second largest Canadian tech company, uh, which was very exciting. I was really impressed with their strategy, a buy for life strategy, which is what I wanted for the team and for the business. Uh, Chris and I founded it 16 years ago and grew it from a two person back bedroom startup to over 80 in the centre of Manchester. Um, And we just felt it was time for us to hand our baby over to uh, other parents um, who could give everybody that security and uh, scale the business to where we wanted it to go with the expertise that they've got. So it's very sad in that sense that we've handed over our baby, but it felt like the right time. And everybody back at the office is really excited about the opportunities they've got now. So Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you haven't right come completely cut your ties with one file. You're still the founder. I see you actually from social media. You're going around getting all the glitzy uh, dinners and <laughs> award ceremonies you're going to. So you, you join life, aren't you? What, yeah, what an inspiration as well. Yeah, yeah. Get, you get the glitzy. Glitzy dinners eventually, Susanna. But can, can you just before you tell me about your glitzy dinners? Can you just tell me uh, what it was like, sort of going from that back bedroom to to eighty people? Because actually, many people will have been doing these sorts of things, going for those opportunities uh, because of COVID, or might be actually in the new year. You know, how did you get that motivation and, and manage to do that? Because you know, that's a Herculean effort, isn't it? Mm. Um, well, it was just we saw a, a problem um, that technology could solve in the apprenticeship and vocational training sector. I was working in care homes as a carer. Um, I then um, became an apprenticeship assessor in nursing homes. And I just thought that it was very inefficient in the way it was being delivered on paper. So uh, myself and Chris saw that we could build a tech solution. And it was just we, we just 100 percent had the belief in the solution that we were building. And we knew it would make massive impacts in efficiency, in return on investment for the training provider and colleges but also in the engagement of the students which if the students are more engaged they're more likely to complete and therefore their own social mobility and opportunities improve as well so it was just that sheer blooded mindedness that we knew we had the right solution to the right problem Um, and we just grew it from there really which was fantastic amazing what's your advice Susanna for anyone who's listening to this who's thinking themselves about setting up uh, their own business Just know the market, know what you're getting into and know it is going to be hard work. It isn't an easy route having and starting up a business. Um, People think, oh, you're on your jollies all the time or, you you know. That comes later when you sold, right? (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it is really, really hard work. You know, some, some, um, well, in the early years we were doing sort of 70, 80 hours each a week. Um, It was really hard. So don't be, don't be complacent in how hard it is. But if you know it's something that you want to go for then go for it it's been an amazing journey and not some you know I'm so honored to have had that and privileged to have had that journey um but also build an amazing team around you you can't it's it's it's, you can't do it on your own you need that incredible team um so as soon as you can start building that but just quickly I just want to congratulate you guys Tom um, and the team there for uh, the shortlist for the trade association awards the best practice uh category for your skills world live radio show it's absolutely fantastic yeah, well, I'm not going to jinx it. So, uh, but thanks for that. Um, uh, you know, it's great, obviously, just to be recognised by our peers. The um, I think the finals are in February, so we'll find out then. But look, I really um, align with what you're saying about teams and the importance of having the right skills and having the right motivation and having the right uh, culture. And I think it's fair to say, isn't it? You know, and uh, every entrepreneur, I think, will tell you this that. Success isn't linear. I mean, I'm sure you can look back over the last sort of 18, 20 years and you probably can can name several times um, when you've just thought, you know what, this isn't this isn't working out. Shall I just fold and you know, start again? I mean, did you have moments like that? 
Absolutely. I think, you know, I describe um, having your own business like a roller coaster and it, you know, it could go month to month. It could go week to week. Sometimes it is literally hour to hour. One minute you're thinking, oh my goodness, why on earth am I doing this? Like you say, you know, there's got to be easier ways uh, for myself to make money as well. Um, But then all of a sudden you find out you win a big contract or you get some amazing feedback from the team or something happens and you're back up there again. And, you know, it is just the biggest roller coaster ever. But the way that I see it, is if every day was good then good becomes boring and that becomes just average if every day was the same and every day was good so you've got to have the lows to appreciate the highs yeah so as a a female entrepreneur that's an amazing story to to share and pass on because i think uh you know women are very resilient but being at the front of of something with everything going on and what life can throw at you particularly if you've you've had that that caring role and you know actually life can be pretty darn challenging are you going to use your time susanna to you know share what you've learned and help other people on what is a really challenging but incredibly fulfilling uh, journey yeah, absolutely. I'm, you know, I'm very, very honoured now and privileged to have that opportunity to support other startups and scale ups. I'm actually working already with an ed, an ed tech startup in Liverpool um, on their journey, right. um, looking at other opportunities. So yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I'm very lucky to have that opportunity now to share my expertise and hopefully smooth out some of the road bumps. They won't, mm. they won't go completely, but just make them a little bit easier for others. Mini yeah. roller coasters yeah. for others, maybe. <laughs> Look, I'm sure you'll be inundated with requests from uh, scale up and. And startup businesses for you to uh, you know, uh, sprinkle a bit of your uh, one file magic dust now Susanna look we just got time um, to ask you uh, actually uh, to introduce the one file tune of the week it's actually spelt on my auto cue of course tune C-H-O-O-N you only get away with that in Manchester I think uh, but um, <laughs> tell us what the uh, the Christmas one file tune of the week is well, you know me, Tom. I love a bit of cheese, uh, especially <laughs> at Christmas. So our one file tune of the week is Shaking Stevens' Merry Christmas, everyone. Snow is falling. That was our one file tune of the week as personally selected by that FE legend, Susanna Lawson. Talking of legends, we've got a couple of gentlemen for you now who've periodically popped up on the show from time to time with their various pearls of wisdom about all things skills, employment and qualifications. I'm talking about Paul Eels, Chief Exec of the Skills and Education Group and David Gallagher, the boss of NCFE. 
an educational charity and awarding organisation. Hello chaps, good to see you, thanks for joining us today. Uh, morning Tom, morning Mims. Yeah. So Paul, um, I'm going to hand over to the Minister now to ask all the difficult questions. Well, I think with that jacket, Paul, let's start with what's the, the strangest secret Santa uh, you've ever opened? Strangest secret Santa? Um, I did get a mug once with things that could not be repeated um, and with a note inside that I had to have it on my desk at work. Um, consequently, it didn't actually make it because um, we're beyond the water. We're not over the watershed, so I can't share what was on the mug. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it actually didn't come out of my cupboard. <laughs> mm. David, what about you? Have you had some rude mugs via Secret Santa? Uh, no, I don't think I have had rude mugs, actually. I feel like I'm missing out. But but when I was uh, 15, bizarrely, the strangest present I ever had was I, I got a, a CD player for my car. But obviously, at 15, I couldn't drive. <laughs> so that was slightly <laughs> odd. So that's the strangest one. I thought that sounds like a good present, but 15, <laughs> yeah. a little early. Yeah. Was that a dad present? I mean, was that really like somebody buying the present for themselves? It's like, yeah, son, have a, yeah, have a car was, CD. My mum bought it for me, actually. My mum bought it for me, but I've got absolutely no idea why. I was just bewildered. Well, Really, slightly strange. She wanted it for herself to play all those cheesy '80s tracks that Mim selected for her. Nothing wrong with cheesy '80s tracks. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, look on a serious note, uh, guys. Um, it's been a strange old year, hasn't it? And we've had two summers of cancelled exams and adapted vocational qualifications, and you know we're clearly not out of the woods of this pandemic yet. Um, so, David, what's your sort of hopes then and aspirations for the FE sector in 2022? Uh, so if I, if I was to take positives from the last couple of years and then this plays in, into the hopes for, for 2022, uh, there's a few things in there. We, we, we definitely moved to a, a state of uh, higher trust. So we believed in teachers more in terms of their judgments. You know, we trusted institutions more. And I think that's great for the culture of education to have more trust in the systems. You know, that when, when a system operates on low levels of trust, I just don't think that that's good for for, for people. Um, I also was, was amazed by the level of um, collaboration and togetherness that, that we saw across lots of organisations, so warden organisations, colleges, training yeah, providers, schools, really got behind our educators. And, and, and I suppose the final thing that I would say, I, I, I do actually, in a strange way, think it's fantastic that, that in the public's mind, now they are thinking about assessment and the thinking about qualifications and the mm. thinking about how that needs to, to be fit for not just the future, but for now as well. And so that's the first time in the whole sort of uh, career of being in education that the public are really engaging in this conversation yeah. and want the system to be better for learners. Yeah. So I think we've got to capitalise on that as, as an opportunity. Yeah, we certainly have. I mean, uh, Paul, I'm sure you'd agree with that as well. I mean, in terms of just the whole way in which the awarding and assessment sector, but the broader skills ecosystem has really stepped up in the last two years. Over four million uh, certificates for vocational uh, skills and training were issued just last year. Obviously, hundreds of thousands of GCSE and A-level students in England were able to progress and, of course, uh, around the devolved administrations in terms of their qualifications as well. And indeed, you've been growing your own awarding organisation, haven't you, taking in other sectors like hospitality over the last uh, year and a half or so? Absolutely. Uh, Mims and I last met each other at the uh, all-party parliamentary group for beer, talking oh, right. about okay. kickstart. Um, Get all the best gigs. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely i do but i i think actually i agree with david that, that the value of qualifications and how qualifications are delivered has peaked in people's minds the public's minds parents minds employers minds i think that the workforce across all parts of the fe and skill sector have become much more team focused they're working together so much better uh, and our own organization staff have like many teachers um i think many of our staff are unsung heroes that have worked phenomenally hard to actually ensure that the uh, show stays uh, stays on and the uh, and we've delivered together as a, an fe and skills and awarding sector a phenomenal outcome um mm. which will have an impact on the life chances of many many people yeah. yeah, thank you, Paul. So that 
all party group on beer wasn't just drinking it was a virtual <laughs> no. meeting just, just to clarify <laughs> just that to very much clarify <laughs> it was about the importance of the sector supporting uh, staffing the isolation and community work that you do just what a brilliant uh, a group or that, that that the sector does so you know thanks so much for highlighting that and you know uh, when the pubs were closed we missed them so much didn't we mm. uh, but you've been brilliant um working with dwp and i hope uh, today has been part of the show tom it's been such a treat to showcase the wider work of dwp and what we do and how we work across sectors and, mm. and really reach out in, in terms of yourself paul and david what's your engagement through the pandemic been with dwp uh, in terms of that wider engagement and how we've learned to to work together and and go forward together david you first yeah go on david then we'll let paul in yeah, so, so my, my career personally actually started out in welfare to work. So I, I uh, worked on DWP funded programs right at the beginning of my career. And I've always spanned ed, uh, employability, welfare to work and skills. And so um, as we, you know, we were staring down the barrel of the pandemic and thinking the labour market would be would be impacted really badly. Uh, we, we very quickly started engaging with DWP, with job centres, with some of the employability contractors to figure out, you know, how do we put skills and employability together? That means that if people have fallen out of work, you know, they've been displaced through changes in the labour market, etc., that we can have skills programmes support those people to, to reskill, to upskill, to, to, to move back into employment. But of course, you know, the labour market hasn't played out like many of us predicted. I mean, you probably did did have a stronger sense than most members as to how that would play out. We, we, we didn't really. And there's been some surprises in there. So we're working really hard between DWP, Job Centre Plus, and lots of different types of providers to make sure that the provision that's delivered is really high quality. And hopefully, you know, if it's there to get somebody a job, fantastic. But if not, that they've got some real currency through a qualification yeah, or skills cool. or credentials that helps them to get on. But the way DWP and Job Centre Plus responded, I think, was fantastic to be honest and, and great to see DWP and DFE trying really hard to work together these big departments yeah. and we've tried to stitch some of that together on, on the ground. David I think that's such a, a strong point I mean look I mean I'm not immune from you know, having a bit of a pop at the government from time to time on this podcast but I tell you you know things like the furlough scheme and the way in which you know that support came into action I mean I haven't met a single employer or an employee that said you know they didn't get their payment as a result of for example um, furlough and the first, second and third lockdowns. And I think, you know, as a country, Mims, actually, we should be proud of that, that actually the response, you know, uh, people worked all hours of the day to you know, to make sure in that national emergency people didn't go without the money that they needed in their pockets. Yeah, so we, we've talked about it and, and the Secretary of State talked about it at DWP in terms mm. of universal credit was like building the track in that kind of Wallace mm. and Gromit way uh, as the as the needs came in uh, and then as David talked about with plan for jobs with our JETS programme so that's if you're six mm. months unemployed uh, extra help over and above the work coaches extra help from three months with JFS restart for that year plus support kickstart as we heard earlier a mm. two million pound programme for the under 25s because we're expecting 12% unemployment now we're mm. you know uh, just hovering just over the 4% in the, the most recent figures yeah. and none Record of this vacancies. just happened as you said Paul what's it been like working with DWP and, and I hope you've also find it's easy with DFE because we've really tried to link that up and I and I hope you feel that yeah last word to you yeah. Paul yeah absolutely and I think that this has been a really great opportunity to connect those people on kickstart into apprenticeships and really great examples across the uh, centres and employers that we work with where actually taking a number of people onto kickstart then translating them when there is a job there into an apprenticeship has been a really great opportunity that i think we we just simply didn't have before i think the the system has become much more connected uh, together which has been a a, a really great outcome and a, and a real success Paul Eels, Chief Executive of Skills of Education Group, and David Gallagher, Chief Executive of NCFE. Thanks so much for joining us today. You're listening to the Skills World Live radio show with Tom Buick. So, Mims and I are going to play out our Christmas special together with a couple of tunes that define, in one way or another, 
the Christmas season's past. I'll tell you why, uh, Mims, when we come back. Uh, I've chosen, I'm going to start with my favourite pop band of all time. It's Aha! Uh-huh. And the sun always shines on TV. <laughs> live radio show and you were just listening to the sun always shines on tv from those 80s heartthrobs aha uh-huh. so tom tell us why you like that norwegian trio quite so much well i have to say uh, um a young tom Buick, probably around 14 years old when i first heard the sun always shines on tv which by the way is uh, aha's only number one um people think take on me do you remember the, the yeah the track, they take do on me? yeah that actually never got to number two now that's starting to show you now what a a nerd and aficionado I am. You but, really like them, didn't you? But yeah, the truth is, uh, I think prancing around in front of my bedroom mirror at 15 years old, I thought I was Morton Harkett, if I'm being totally honest. Don't worry, I thought it was Madonna in the 80s. It's totally <laughs> normal. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was a looker and he was a heartthrob. Yeah. I can see that. And you know what? They're still going. I was actually, I I, I went to Oslo to see them actually just before the pandemic. Um, oh, and, you are a fan, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> and, and well, I've, I've been all over the world. I've been to Brazil to see them. I've been to Germany. Super I've, fan, right here. Super fan, our half fan. So, so Morton, if you're you watching, send me a Christmas card. So, please. did you see him? Wasn't he on um, that program where they yeah, had dressed that's up right. in costumes? He, yeah, he was. I can't remember what it's called yeah, now. Uh, um, the, not the voice, is it? No, it's, it's called not something the voice. else. Yeah, anyway, it's yeah, coming up guess. soon. Oh, the one they all shout, "Take it off." That's right. That one, and I don't was, know what it's yeah, called. Yeah. There'll be people tweeting us as we yeah, speak. They will uh, send us an email saying, "You know, you cultural philistines, you don't even know the name of that show." I think it's behind the mask. Something about the mask. Yeah. On there as well. Yeah, yeah. And actually, people there. didn't particularly guess who he was, even though his voice no, is so distinctive. I had no clue. It's so yeah. distinctive, that yeah. Norwegian crew. And crooner. you didn't, as a super fan. Um, well, I don't watch the show, oh, unfortunately. Well, so go, I have to say, you know, I did say to my son when I found out about it, look, if I'd seen that show, I would have got it. I him. know what he's watching at Christmas. Yeah. Then. Okay. Well, anyway, we're going to come up to the end of the show, um, unfortunately. Should we uh, pull a Christmas cracker? Yes. Just the one. Yeah, well, okay, on one, okay, socially distanced, right? Win. One, two, three. Oh. oh, you did too. I did. Well, I, just it's just where we've got a backup, Look at so that. we can I've got do that. There, in there we go. You've got a blue hat. Have I got a joke? Yeah, you've got to come on. Do you want to read? Well, I think if I won. What is that? I mean, if you can, <laughs> can you see that there? That's it's in. Yeah, camera work. Oh, uh, we'll camera two there. over Here there. Yeah, try that go. one. Oh, ah. no, what is that? I don't know. Answers on a postcode for that one. Right. So, postcard. In, so, what was the what was the joke? Let's have a look. I've got my glasses oh, on. Oh, God, so. here we go. So, what athlete is the warmest in winter? 
No idea. The no. long jumper. Oh, uh, well, I've got the Christmas good. jumper on. The long <laughs> jumper. Okay. <laughs> now, um, I've just got enough time to say that if you're looking for an exciting new role in 2022, uh, of course, do check out the Job Centre website. But also here at Skills World Live Productions, we're taking on a radio production assistant to support this popular FE community podcast. We're going to add to the 1.2 million vacancies very, very shortly. It's all right. We can <laughs> fill them at DWP. So if you're interested, just head over to our website where you can find uh, further details. But that really does sound like an amazing opportunity. I worked in radio for many years and I absolutely would have been jumping at the chance. Indeed. Thank you, Minister, for spending so much time on this radio podcast show uh, today. It's been great to see you and indeed all those amazing guests. What just fantastic stories. Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant to see, weren't they? Just brilliant and inspiring and just fantastic to come on here and share their stories for, with other people who will probably need to hear them as well. Yeah, they do. They really were great. And uh, also, what a brilliant example uh, of DWP is doing around uh, the country to ensure this public health crisis has not turned into a major employment crisis. I think you've really picked that up from the interviews we've done today. So, Mims. What's the final track you're going to play out the episode on? Mm, so I'm very proud of DWP. I cannot uh, deny that. But we're finishing definitely on a high because we're having some wham last Christmas. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, but, f- but for me, I just remember the video. Do you remember? Yes, so I Pepsi do. Pepsi yeah. and Shirley were in the video. That's and right. George with his beautiful uh, doe eyes staring across the table. Mm. And it, oh, it was the heartbreak in the snow. Uh, so I always enjoy the song but i love the video equally because it was great fun yeah for a certain generation watching 1980s wham it's just so captivating isn't it but if you weren't born in that era our you apologies missed to out. you you I missed have. out you missed out <laughs> you have great thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again very soon
Remember to subscribe to Skills World Live at fenews.co.uk or just download the show from any one of your favourite podcasting sites, including iTunes, Spotify and Spreaker. Your world, Skills World.